Okay, so we'll start. Any other questions before I start? This is a PowerPoint that we don't have it online. Um, you don't have this one yet, but you will after lecture. Yeah. And I highlighted a few areas on this one. I think it's in there. Uh, I'm not going to pull off that picture. <laughs> yeah, because I just added these. We'll start with this one. Like that. And I think most of you can probably relate to this. All right. Okay, so I added the focus points at the beginning, and then we'll kind of go. So mobility and immunity, we're not going to cover a whole lot of immunity. Like, you don't need to know anything cellular. It's uh, sort of some nursing care. Um, well, we'll start with mobility. I read all parts of health promotion, nursing interview assessment and intervention. Um, and then I would definitely read you're assigned, but this could be sort of the focus. For immunity, read the culture, the focus on diversity and culture, health promotion, patient parent teaching, and uh, risk factors for immunity. And there might be some risk factors for mobility too, so sort of know those. And we have, I think, six topics for this one. So osteoporosis. Um, Definitely check out the overview. On all of these disease processes, you'll need to know a little bit of patho, kind of what the definition is, because uh, they have different definitions. Um, so overview, clinical manifestations. So what does it look like? Um, nursing process. And mostly non-pharmacological interventions. We're not going to talk a whole lot about pharmacological interventions for this week. Cord injuries seems like a pretty big topic, but I want you to know the mechanism of injury. And in the book, there are several types. So kind of have those memorized. Uh, some patho classifications. So what level of injury there is. So be familiar with that. Um, and there's a section, I think it's boxed, on autonomic dysreflexia. Uh, priorities, think of your ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. Phases, so acute, subacute, and chronic. So know the differences between those. <laughs> and some nursing diagnoses. And for all of these, I would know at least a few nursing diagnoses that kind of go with the questions. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Is remember that one is a autoimmune disease, and that's in the immunity section, I do believe. Um, know the risk factors. <laughs> lab tests. There are a few lab tests that you can do for rheumatoid arthritis, but the anti-CCP is a very, very specific for RA. Osteoarthritis. Wear and tear in joints. So know the differences between these two arthritis. Mm -hmm. Well, manifestations, um, education, surgical interventions. That one will be important. Non-pharmacological interventions. I know some goals and nursing process for all of these. Mobility. I'll leave this up here for a minute. Um, I'm going to promote more mobility and um, regular exercise programs. So we want to teach the patients to be active um, as much as they're able to. Another important thing is teaching them how to use assistive devices. And that could be any of these items, walker, cane, wheelchair, environmental modifications if needed, education, Collaborative care, and with all of these, all of the nursing process or the disease processes, 
need collaborative care between nursing, dietitians, physical therapy. Assessment and diagnosis for mobility. And we're going to observe the gait and posture. Um, patient interview, that's pretty much with every disease process. We want to ask about any musculoskeletal injuries um, and what their mobility is like, if there's any deficits in that. Physical exam, and we sort of did this on first term where we went through the whole system, feeling the bones and the muscles and joints. And diagnostic tests. I don't believe there's anything specific on this, but kind of know in general uh, what we're going to use to to visualize bones and soft tissue. Uh, motion of healthy immune function. Uh, diet, a balanced diet with these items. Um, maintain a healthy lifestyle. Regular exercise is going to be important. Good hygiene habits like hand hygiene and vaccinations. Um, avoiding harmful habits like smoking or excessive alcohol or illicit drugs. And seek medical attention. Uh, if you have any signs of infection or classes you might Okay, so we'll start with osteoarthritis and degenerative joint disease involving arthritis breakdown and bone remodeling. So know that one. Etiology includes age, obesity, joint injury, genetics possibly, probably to a smaller extent. At risk factors, aging, obesity, joint overuse, and some of these are modifiable and non-modifiable. So know the difference between those two. Um, age would be non-modifiable. Obesity, joint overuse. And to a certain extent, joint injury could be modifiable, but sometimes non-modifiable. Um, clinical manifestations. Increased range of motion. Uh, these following diagnostic tests and a few therapies for osteoarthritis. Osteoporosis. Um, this is characterized by increased bone density, increased fracture risk. So know that about osteoporosis. Um, etiology, aging is a big one. Uh, hormonal changes nutritional deficits, and being sedentary, not really being active. Um, risk factors, uh, mostly female, advanced age, low body weight, and family history. And clinical manifestations, and you might want to memorize this, um, includes fractures, back pain, and loss of height. So people become shorter a little bit with osteoporosis. Um, these diagnostic tests, DEXA scan, BRAC assessment, and treatment, <laughs> these are medications or uh, calcium vitamin D supplements. Uh, calcium and vitamin D work together for bone absorption. I'll try to talk louder than the rain. Spinal cord injuries, uh, trauma, to the spine, spinal cord resulting in sensory, motor, and autonomic dysfunction. And this is mostly caused by traumatic accidents or falls or sporting in, in injuries, um, anything that causes trauma. High risk activities, inadequate safety measures, like not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, clinical manifestations kind of varies on the 
the injury level uh, and severity could lead to paralysis at the worst. Sensory deficits, bowel and bladder dysfunction. Diagnostic tests, big ones are MRI, CT scan. CT scan is quicker, so they'll get them in for CP. And then as time allows, if everything's stable, we'll go into MRI. And then of course, the neurological assessment. Um, treatment, the biggest one is gonna be stabilization. So keeping the neck and the patient aligned. And then managing other complications that come with spinal cord injury. So in, in that one, is uh, MRI going to be more comprehensive, like in the last test? If we were to get a question like that, yes. MRI would be so You probably won't get a question like that, but it would see a lot more. Yeah. And CT scan can see a whole lot with spinal cord injuries. Um, and it's just a lot quicker because they can get them from being stable in the emergency department all the way to uh, the CT to get that done. And that could be read too quick. Rheumatoid arthritis. The big thing to know is it's a chronic autoimmune disease. And you'll want to know about the synovial and inflammation and joint destruction. The worst case I saw when I was 19 or 20, starting as a CNA in a care center, an old lady was so crippled up, like all of her extremities, that you had to kind of really be careful to turn her. She was extremely mean too, but she liked me because her and my grandmother were friends. But it could be really debilitating and towards the end could cause a lot of, uh, a lot of care. Etiology, uh, genetic predisposition, and environmental triggers. Um, risk factors include family history, smoking is a big one, environmental exposures, uh, clinical manifestations, joint pain, swelling, and another one you'll want to know is morning stiffness. So towards the beginning, maybe the, the middle, yeah. In the morning, they'll have a lot more stiffness, mostly because they're not moving around. And diagnostic tests. No, that's in one of the questions. Um, no, that was a few slides up. That's right. It's coming back to me now. Um, CBC, rheumatoid factor, and imaging studies. Okay, question. Uh, treatment studies. Uh, pharmacology, physical therapy, and possible surgical interventions. One. I think at least one of us can identify with this from clinicals yesterday. Not being the first clinical, it's more like the eighth. <laughs> And I think the student actually kind of looked like that when I saw her. I did. <laughs> a little bit. But in a good way. <laughs> Off to some questions. And then towards the end of the questions, I would pay more attention to the questions when you're studying, because you might see something similar. Let me move this out of the way. I don't really need to see myself. <laughs> but we want to see Curry, so I'll put it there. All right, so this is on the immune system. A nurse is providing care to a client with compromised immune system. Which independent nursing intervention should the nurse include in the client's plan of care? 
And remember, independent nursing intervention is something we can do that's not really included in the doctor's order, so we don't need somebody to give us an order for it. Yeah. Educating the client on the importance of a nutrition, nutritious diet. You just think of that one. Okay. Good. Administering corticosteroids per order. That's kind of a giveaway that it's not that. Prescribing prophylactic antibiotic therapy. Okay. And recommending gene transfer therapy. Yeah, educating the client on the importance of nutritious diet. And I'll leave these up here, and sometimes we still see the rationale for certain questions. Which lifestyle factor is considered a modifiable risk factor for immune disorders? Age, gender, smoking, family history. Anybody think age? Because we can't really modify our age yet. I mean, one day we might be able to. Yeah, you just stop counting your birthday. There we go. That's a good idea. Stop counting our birthday. Uh, gender. I'll leave that one alone. Smoking. He's on the test. Smoking. And family history. Can't really change that either. So that's kind of a almost too easy one. Oh. So, those are great. You like those? Yeah, that one might not be on the test. Makes you think. <laughs> yeah. well, it makes you think the difference between modifiable and not modifiable. Exactly. The client, an adult client, is diagnosed with degenerative bone disease that is impairing in mobility. Based on this information alone, which action should the nurses complete first? Implement a low-level exercise program for the client. Anybody think that one? Assess the client's pain management. And uh, teach the client relaxation techniques. Refer the client to a dietitian. Is B. That's uh, kind of a priority action. We want to make sure their pain is under control because they're not going to learn anything really if they're in pain. And I'll leave this up for a minute. I just threw these together this morning. Yeah, funny story. I actually did this when I was a, a student. I had most of my medications memorized, except for one. And that was the one that the patient asked, so what's this for? And I'm like, um, uh, let me go check. A little embarrassing. So always know all of your medications. I felt sort of stupid, but I never made that mistake again. A nurse is conducting a gait and posture assessment for a client who is experiencing mobility issues. Which, which action by the nurse is appropriate during this assessment? And the key part of this question is conducting a gait and posture assessment. So assessing the client's muscle mass and strength Anybody think that one? Measuring the length and circumference of the client's extremities. Inspecting the client's spine for curvature. Updating the client's client for tenderness and pain. So since we're uh, assessing the gait and posture, it's going to be inspecting the client's spine for curvature. So when you're taking the test, um, just pay attention to the wording and maybe take just a little tiny bit more time. Um, sometimes if we're in a hurry, it kind of trips us up a little bit and we miss certain cues. Uh, 
A nurse is planning care for a client who is experiencing alteration in mobility. Which would the nurse include as an independent nursing intervention? And I have a lot of mobility questions in here. Instructing on the importance of proper nutrition and active diet lifestyle, or an active lifestyle. What do you think that one? Administering a prescribed non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Identifying necessary modifications to home environment. Maybe. Prescribing a skeletal muscle relaxant. And since we're not able to prescribe, it's not that one. And it's a instructing on the importance of proper nutrition and active lifestyle. So that goes with uh, teaching them about a uh, an exercise program and uh, proper nutrition. <clears throat> Go back to the question for a second. <laughs> Can I have more to do with yeah. um, they have an alteration in mobility and boxes or book them or rugs that they could trip on? Wouldn't that be more of a risk than their nutrition. Somewhat. Yeah. I think in the real world either one would be correct. But uh, for kind of overall for mobility, making sure that they're on top of their nutrition and then they have uh, proper exercise. It keeps uh, the strength and helps them move around a little bit better. Okay. Good question. might be able to relate to this one too. Right. Yeah, now we're on to school posts. The patient asks, what can be done to decrease the risk of actually developing osteoporosis? Which intervention would be the most beneficial for the client? A, decrease the amount of calcium in the client's diet. Anybody think that one? <laughs> uh, provide the client with assisted range of motion exercises twice daily. A, um, increase regular weight-bearing activities. Protecting the client's bones with strict bed rest. I think that's the opposite of what we want to do. It's regular weight bearing activities. Which physiological change is the primary cause of loss of height in individuals with osteoporosis. A, collapse of vertebral bodies. What do you think that one? A decrease in length of bone, or long bones. Uh, flexion of the knees and hips. Uh, cervical lordosis. And going to be collapse of vertebral bodies. Start getting some bone loss and they collapse and you become shorter. Client with rheumatoid arthritis asks for suggestions regarding exercise. Which recommendation should the nurse make? So should we talk to them about swimming? Um, how about jogging? Probably not. It's pretty impactful. Tennis <laughs> and bowling would also be painful. So it's going to be swimming. Works on all of the uh, extremities and joints. Less stress. It keeps them active. Well, 
what defines the primary underlying mechanism of RA? Progressive erosion of joint structures, um, abnormal accumulation of calcium deposits in joints, impaired nerve signaling within the musculoskeletal system, and how about attack on the immune system's body's own tissues? Yes. That's right. And I'll leave this up here for a few seconds. Which cardiovascular complication is frequently linked to RA and poses an elevated risk of uh, myocardial infarction? The hypertension, uh, atrial fibrillation, and regular heartbeat. Uh, coronary artery disease. Anybody think that one? And the peripheral artery disease. So you'll want to remember this one, um, coronary artery disease. And the clues on this question is uh, cardiovascular complication and myocardial infarction. So the big thing with MI would be coronary artery disease where there's plaque in the arteries and that could produce a, a clot and narrow the artery. So be familiar with this one. And I'll leave this up here for a few seconds. And this was in one of our first slides. A client with joint pain and stiffness presents to the clinic. <clears throat> Which laboratory test is most specific for diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis, often yielding positive results even before the onset of symptoms? It's a rheumatoid factor. That could be one test, but not as specific. Um, ESR. Um, C-reactive protein. And antibodies to cyclic citraluminated peptide, or anti-CPP, CCP. Good, he's remembered, yay. That's it. So remember that one. Um, it's just a lot more specific to RA and they can diagnose it relatively quickly. What non-pharmacological therapy should a nurse suggest to reduce strain on the affected joint for a patient with osteoarthritis. Um, hot, cold therapy, what do you think that one? Exercise and physical therapy. Uh, weight management. <clears throat> and joint protection techniques. And that one's joint protection techniques. Do we want to do everything we can with our osteoarthritis, or you'll see an OA um, to protect the joints as much as we can? Which response from a patient with osteoarthritis demonstrates comprehensive or comprehension of exercise recommendations for managing the condition? A is, I plan to engage in high impact exercises like running or running to strengthen my joints. Anybody think that one? I'll incorporate regular low impact activities like swimming and cycling into my routine. I'll avoid exercise altogether to prevent further damage to my joints. Probably not. I'll focus solely on weightlifting to improve my joint press. Right, for a few seconds. Take a seven. 
probably um, relate to this one as well. Of course, after towards the end of this term, we'll have that small uh, med dose calc lecture that's optional. I think that's the last. Oh no, I guess I have a couple more. This morning I forgot to add spinal cord injury questions, so I have a couple of those. A client who sustained a cervical neck injury two days ago is demonstrating an irregular respiratory pattern with a rate of eight to 10 breaths per minute. Based on this information, which problem is the priority? Is it uh, A, impaired physical mobility? Probably not. Potential for autonomic dysreflexia. Ineffective breathing patterns? Anybody think that one? Uh, impaired gas exchange. And ineffective breathing patterns. Yes. We'll go back here, mostly because of the irregular respiratory pattern. So that'll kind of clue us in sort of where to look. If uh, it mentioned like a blood gas that was off, then we would talk about impaired gas exchange. So I'll leave this up here. And any impaired gas exchange would be caused by the ineffective breathing pattern. An adolescent is brought into the emergency department with injuries sustained from a motor vehicle crash. Which goal is a priority while providing nursing care for this client? Adequate urine output? Probably not. Stable blood pressure. Continued stabilization of the neck and spinal cord. Yep. Insertion of intravenous access. Even though all of these are um, important, the biggest priority is C. Any spinal cord injury or suspected, we want to keep their spine and their neck aligned. For a minute. <clears throat> And it looks like that's it. Yeah, not bad. We only have five minutes left. Are there any questions? Or do you want to see the question? No, that's fine. Airwave, airwave breathing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.